Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. Blue Licker Shield Death Slash Sergeant Pines is the fastest menu of meat sacks. I'm a useful idiot. Welcome. And uh, let's talk about Moldova. And the reason why this is important is because there's a, a lot of similarities, or at least some similar elements that are occurring in Moldova as there are in Ukraine. And Moldova, of course, is a country that's, uh, that borders Romania and Ukraine. In fact, it's uh, developed by a large portion of Ukraine. And it, it has a, a interesting relationship to Russia, much similar to the, the relationship that uh, the Ukraine has to Russia. For that reason, it's important. There's similar tensions going on, and there's a possibility we could hear more about more Moldova. And um, one of the other reasons we're here, we're going to hear about Moldova much uh, more is uh, uh, just this last week uh, they put it on the fast track to uh, take Georgia and Moldova and uh, and have them sign new agreements with the EU. And uh, in light of the uh, the events in Ukraine and Crimea, of course these uh, these events have affected uh, the whole timetable. So now all of that is on the fast track. So instead of August, they they pushed this back up to June. So now it's just a matter of a couple of months. And Georgia and Moldova will be signing these new agreements with the EU. EU. And these are the same the same agreements that uh, the Ukraine was considering that Yanukovych uh, balked at and uh, set off the events in Ukraine. So now we're going to have Georgia, Moldova uh, 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 sign those same sort of agreements. And uh, interestingly enough, Georgia and Moldova both supported the Ukraine, and they also supported uh, sanctions against uh, Russia. And this is very precarious for, uh, for a lot of these countries in that region, like Georgia and Moldova, uh, supporting these uh, sanctions. Uh, against Russia because of the, the uh, Ukraine event. And the reason why is not so much uh, the threat of military action per se as much as uh, Russia can really put the economic screws on these countries and they're, they're doing exactly that to Moldova and uh, have been doing it to Georgia and certainly doing it to the Ukraine. Um, and uh, another similarity we have uh, going on in uh, Moldova that's important is there's a uh, very pro-Russian uh, separatist region there called Transnistria. Uh, Trans Transnistria. Uh, correct. Uh, somebody could correct me on the pronunciation. I would appreciate it. Um, so anyway, this uh, this area has been uh, separatist uh, regions uh, wanting uh, independence since uh, breaking away from the Soviet Union. In fact, there was a armed conflict in Mol Moldova. Uh, over this uh, issue between 1990-1992. And uh, so for this reason, there's a, a setup um, for a, a possible Russian intervention of some sort, at least uh, per, per, perhaps at this uh, juncture, covert operations. And we, we can guarantee that there's uh, forces on the ground already, organizations, uh, opposition groups that are being uh, uh, run by uh, locals and financed by uh, foreign elements, including the United States, it's just a no-brainer that they've been involved in Moldova for a while. Although, obviously, the uh, situation in, in uh, Moldova is not quite as uh, fragile and dynamic as what we see in the Ukraine. And uh, another thing that we see that's similar in Moldova is this econo economic overlap with Russia. And uh, uh, Moldova imports almost all of its energy from Russia. And so, once again, for them to be a uh, uh, confronting Russia at this point is probably only going to uh, drive their energy prices up, which is unfortunate because they are the poorest country in Europe. And um, and Moldova also, like Ukraine, is a, has a, a very uh, fertile ground and a vast uh, agriculture uh, infrastructure. And for this reason, a lot of uh, Western companies are going to be very interested. Uh, the same ones, Monsanto, DuPont, uh, and John Deere, and all the rest that I mentioned in the Ukraine video, uh, they're all going to be interested in getting into Moldova as well. And um, just like uh, Russia is moving moved quickly on the Crimea uh, issue, um, they they reacted quickly because the United States was uh, 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 obviously uh, propping up a, a coup of sorts and was also moving very quickly. And we see that same uh, uh, 
a sense of urgency now as these uh, this fast track these uh, these trade agreements with uh, Georgia and Moldova surge forward, and uh, this is a uh, uh, eurozone NATO has embraced Eastern Europe and surges east, and that's at, at the heart of this um, because uh, Russia has been aware of the U.S. meddling in all these post-Soviet Union areas uh, for the last 20 years, and uh, we've seen, uh, like I say, the eurozone and NATO have embraced all Eastern Europe, and, and they keep surging east, and uh, now they're going to have new agreements with Georgia, uh, Moldova, and uh, the Ukraine, and that puts them right on the Russian border, and, and, and in fact, uh, uh, these agreements are being uh, arranged for, with Ukraine, Georgia, Moldova, and Armenia, and um, all these countries have a lot of political problems um, as well. And um, uh, the, the uh, government of uh, Moldova has had nothing but uh, political turmoil uh, since 2009. And uh, so it's kind of precarious that the Eurozone is interested in bringing in these uh, still very troubled governments with a lot of corruption um, and bringing them in uh, closer and closer to uh, the Eurozone. But uh, for those who uh, do don't know much about uh, Moldova, I, I know a little bit about it because I had some friends from Moldova. But uh, let me uh, just give a little quick background. Uh, the poorest country in Europe, like I say, 60% of their GDP is the service sector. Um, and like uh, the Ukraine and other countries in this region, they were a uh, constant uh, tug of war uh, between the Ottoman Empire and the Russian Empire. And a lot of that uh, area... Um, Including parts of Ukraine and now Moldova uh, uh, were part of the Ottoman Empire and, and became part of the Russian Empire. I think sometime during the 19th century. And uh, there's also very close ties between uh, Moldova and Romania. And uh, parts of Romania and parts of Moldova exchange hands uh, numerous times uh, throughout the last 200 years. And um, in fact, it's a, a, apparently a, a Romanian national project is the reunification of Moldova with Romania um, because Moldova actually has a lot more affinity to Romania than the, the uh, Ukraine and the Russians to the, to the east. And uh, Moldova is also part of uh, what happened in uh, Ukraine and Crimea uh, during the Russo-Turkish Wars. Uh, the Tatars were expelled. Uh, all the Muslims were um, taken out of a lot of these regions and, and, and only returned uh, later in the 20th century. And, uh, and Moldova also, like uh, Ukraine, was uh, persecuted under Stalin and suffered under the um, 1940s uh, famine. And So anyway, they have a very similar history and relationship to Russia, Soviet Union, and the Russian, and the Russian Empire as Ukraine. And uh, they got their independence in 1990, like all the post-Soviet uh, republics. And in 1994, became a member of the so-called NATO Partnership for Peace. And this is a, 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 a group, a, a, an organization that uh, essentially allows a lot of countries that uh, uh, are not part of NATO have uh, desires to be part of NATO and are too provocative to bring into NATO at this juncture as far as this confrontation with Russia. So therefore, they are part of this alternate uh, semi-NATO, uh, NATO Junior, NATO Partnership for Peace. And um, so uh, uh, Russia's national security fears about these countries all joining NATO are, are certainly genuine. And um, so then, like I say, we have this uh, separatist region, and this could be a, a hot point um, in further relations between Moldova and Russia. Um, as they move closer to the EU as well. Now that we see this fast tracking, um, it looks like the timetable um, between now and June, so April, May, and June. So the next two months, uh, we should keep our eyes open for some uh, shifts in dynamics in Moldova and see if we see uh, any of the same elements that we uh, see have seen unfold in uh, Ukraine. And if uh, that does happen, it will be unfortunate. And um, so we have uh, in these negotiations one of the, one of the catching points uh, specifically too is that Georgia wants commitment to EU membership. So of all these countries joining the uh, signing these new 
EU uh, agreements, trade agreements, Georgia is very interested in, in a commitment for them to join the Eurozone, um, which, as always, I say is an interesting prospect. I know they think it's going to bring wealth and democracy to them, but it's an interesting point in history to uh, come to that conclusion. And um, so we have uh, other countries in that region, Belarus and Azerbaijan, that are kind of outside the realms of this uh, east-west struggle for the time being, but down the road um, this could change. And um, I think the bottom line here is Moldova, like Ukraine, um, has a lot of oligarchs and they want to be part of the uh, western uh, economic system so they can cash in. It's not about democracy, it's not about bringing equality, it's not bringing about bringing um, a better future for Moldovans or anyone else in that region. Um, it's about um, cashing in and, and getting in these trade agreements and, and siphoning off aid money, siphoning off loan money, and um, that's how it goes. So there, there we have it. Uh, Moldova, importantly, even though I focus on Moldova, it's, it's really important that uh, Georgia and um, Moldova are uh, both included in this uh, this new um, uh, fast track trade agreements and uh, could stir up a little bit more trouble so let's keep our eyes peeled. I'm a useful idiot, don't you be one too.